in a recent video. Oh my god, that was a year ago! I explained coaster credits. In said video, I breezed over what a coaster enthusiast was. This was a massive misstep. I should have started with a deeper explanation of what a coaster enthusiast was. So let me teach you, my almost entirely coaster enthusiast audience, what a coaster enthusiast is in agonizingly long detail. Coaster enthusiasts. As mentioned in my Coaster Credits Explained video, people don't necessarily agree on what a coaster enthusiast is. Where does it start? Why do people ride wild rides? It's what I call the type T personality, and the T stands for thrills. The American coaster enthusiasts are fanatics with a capital F. One ride is never enough. Neither is one coaster. It's like sex for people in many respects. It is addictive. For me, I think people become coaster enthusiasts when they start becoming enthusiastic about coasters. I know, call me crazy. Try this out and about. Start conversations with people about roller coasters. Excuse me, waiter, at the Olive Garden? Can you believe that the first Giga Roller Coaster Millennium Force is already 20 years old? Hey Ellen Dugongaris, what's your favorite roller coaster? The Amazing Hulk or R.I.P. Ride Rocket? Yo, 911 operator, do you think Disney is going to finish the Tron roller coaster this decade? The one I keep forgetting about and just woke up from remembering? Um, ma'am? If they respond enthusiastically to these questions, coaster enthusiasts. If they respond any differently, they must have a boring personality. I don't know what to say. I don't know what's wrong with them. I don't know their malfunction. Theme park enthusiasts. There is also a community of theme park enthusiasts. They may enjoy roller coasters because they enjoy rides, but this community is more into the overall environment and experience at theme parks. I am currently walking into the Magic Kingdom and there's no Halloween decorations. Like, great, I'm in Magic Kingdom. But it's not spooky. There's more emphasis on theming than there is on thrills. But sure, the two do mix. Are roller coaster enthusiasts also theme park enthusiasts? Sometimes. Usually. I think. But not always. As I've seen a coaster enthusiast state that they don't think that theming adds anything to a roller coaster. I find it incredibly difficult to imagine that, but I can see that being a thing. Maybe. To me, personally, theming adds so much to a coaster. I actually love Rock and Roller Coaster a lot. If it just sat outside without any of its interactive theming, it would be kind of just okay. So it's true that there is a difference between coaster enthusiasts and theme park enthusiasts. Enthusiasts are all leaning somewhere on this scale. But enough of all that. Let's start where it all begins for coaster enthusiasts. Stage 1. Sparks of Coaster Enthusiasm. So where does one catch the coaster enthusiasm virus? Does it spread by booty sweat transmitting from buttocks to buttocks from the seats? Actually, no. Those are other viruses, and you should really speak to a medical professional instead of talking to me about it. Stop talking to me about it. I can think of several starting points. The most obvious being at an amusement park. You ride coaster, you have fun, you keep going down that road. Another one is maybe you have a friend that introduces you to coasters. Well, my friend, you've just experienced Colossus, one of the longest roller coasters in the world. The longest in the world? Yep. I thought all roller coasters were the same. <laughs> Psst, hey kid, looking pretty down on your luck. Have you tried coasters? First one's free because I have a bring a friend coupon with my season pass and boom, you're hooked. Just like that. Parents, this can happen to your kids. It's like sex. Third is a big one. Theme park and roller coaster um, entertainment, media, videos, TV shows, books, and games. Books. <laughs> For example, maybe you saw this book as a kid and you picked it up for pictures of crazy, wacky, scary rides. And if you actually bother reading the text inside, it's filled to the brim with cool coaster history and information. Or maybe you read this amazing piece of literature. Videos! It's possible you've come across a VHS or DVD about coasters. Not likely, but possible. They were out there and they were extremely cool. Watch retro coaster videos on YouTube and you won't be disappointed. How are you doing? 
In the modern era of coaster enthusiasm, YouTube is the hippest joint in the his house. Some of the younger or generally newer coaster enthusiasts get hooked by seeing POV videos, then vlogs, which may lead to reviews, or whatever. Legend! What?! And boom, you're hooked. Parents, this could happen to your kids. TV shows! When I was younger, I was lucky if something aired on PBS. But Travel Channel gave the next generation of coaster enthusiasts insane coaster wars. My seething jealousy has no end. I love this stupid show. And there was also Burt the Conqueror, which was a show featuring comedian Burt Kreischer. This was a show featuring a comedian Burt um, Kreischer. Hmm, Burt Kreischer? This was a show featuring comedian Burt Kreischer traveling and often just contained a lot of Burt yelling on roller coasters. He's screaming! It's really not my thing, but I've seen the show mentioned a lot online in this community. And then, oh my god, Brain Rush on Cartoon Network in 2009, the most awkward game show I've ever seen taking place on coasters at Knott's Berry Farm. You're gonna be even more nervous because right now you are a contestant on Brain Rush. Oh my god, really? Yes. I like to draw manga, which is like Japanese cartoon. Ah. Games. Ooh, what's up gamers? This is a big one, I think. I picked up Roller Coaster Tycoon at the Scholastic Book Fair and got so wrapped up in it, I landed in internet forums looking for more custom scenery and scenarios to download. A similar thing happens with all of the more realistic coaster simulator games. Planet Coaster, the modern successor to Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, has the Steam Workshop with a lot of user-created content being shared. And a lot of this content is recreations of real-life coasters. After hundreds of hours creating and observing rides, don't you want to get out and ride them in real life? I did. But I found coasters pretty scary and the g-forces on them were pretty overwhelming. But I was determined to overcome this and have the real life RCT experience. And with the help of Viper, I did. However, the cartoony coaster sims are worthless trash to me. This cover is false advertising, your garbage sim theme park, totally unrealistic coasters, 0 out of 10. Stage 2. MUTATION! Suddenly, you're marathoning coasters and collecting all the coaster credits at every park you visit. Tired of running to storage bins? Tired of crawling over that stranger next to you as your party of 12 enthusiasts you met on Instagram split up in the single rider queues? Easy fix! Zipper pockets! Cargo shorts! Fashion bitch! And what's the best conversation starter at parks? Why, an RMC t-shirt of course. Show your support for your favorite roller coasters and coaster manufacturers. The other enthusiasts need to know that you like the good coasties, not the bad ones. Man, the wind hits strong on these coasters. My eyes are watering. Better ditch the contact lenses and go for the glasses. Perhaps prescription sunglasses with the aerodynamic design. Sleek, fast, innovative. Just like RMC, my favorite. But careful, don't want to lose those glasses on the rides. Hang time can be a cruel mistress on those shades. Good thing I have my trusty pal glasses strap with me. Wow, these terrain parks sure are hard on the tootsies. Better get some hiking shoes. Now that's design with function in mind. Fanny pack. Fashion bit. Stage three, self-awareness. So you've accepted it. You're a coaster enthusiast. I've gotta be honest, there is a lot of criticism out there. There's a lot of thusies out there. The hyper-stereotypical enthusiasts. A caricature of coaster enthusiasts. Their ranked coasters list mostly aligns with the ideal ranked list. You like Gatekeeper? Seriously? Are you GP? Go live your best coaster enthusiast life, you stinky thusies. Whatever that may or may not entail. Count those credits, rank those rides if you want. Flood the single rider line with the boys. Make those minute nitpicks. Call those objectively forceful rides unforceful. Vlog in the middle of a crowded queue. Steal a kid for a kitty credit. Film and time write-ups. Simply trying to do their jobs that they aren't paid enough for. Refine and conquer the GP. Okay, just remember to have fun. Be respectful. It's just roller coasters. So what do coaster enthusiasts love? Sometimes it's just the simple things, the feeling of nostalgia that a simple track design can bring up. How about a wooden roller coaster with PTC trains, 
forget about it. How about the sound of a roaring hollow B&M spine, screaming in unison with the passengers as the train passes? I think above all else, it's escapism. Nothing else seems to matter when you're on a roller coaster. The high you get from the adrenaline, paired with the time you're locked in that seat, as long as you're on that coaster, you're free of all of your responsibilities, and that is guaranteed. It's safe. You don't have to do a damn thing. But it's thrilling, too. I always found it funny that there was a phase of parks adding VR experiences to their coasters. You're already on a roller coaster, that's an ideal experience. It doesn't need gargoyles. It doesn't need all this sh**. I love you all for watching this dumb stuff, and I love the connections and friendships I've made with other enthusiasts. That's really all I have to say on the topic of coaster enthusiasts. So if you enjoyed this video and you didn't see my other one on Coaster Credits Explained, now is the appropriate time to go and watch that video. Thank you so much for watching, um, leave a like and a comment if you'd like, for YouTube reasons, it helps me out. Hulk smash that subscribe button, just like Ellen Dugongress would, be kind. This has been Zero Credits Remaining, and lose it or lose it, sister.